Advice is a word I tend to take for granted. It enters my mind and rolls off my tongue pretty casually. I might use it for something as insignificant as giving up the last piece of pie so that one of my kids can have it. Okay, I say to them rather pathetically. I'll sacrifice my piece of pie to make you happy because that's what parents do. For me, and I think for many people in our culture, sacrifice has been stripped of its religious resonance. We use it in secular terms to stand in for the idea of giving up something, anything really. This past summer, I spent a lot of time thinking more deeply about the concept of sacrifice, thanks to a seminary class I took on early Christianity and the New Testament. There was lots of talk about sacrifice among the ancient Hebrews, Greeks, and Romans during those first two centuries of the Common Era when Christianity was emerging and beginning to spread in the lands of the Roman Empire. Sacrifice had a specifically religious connotation in that context. Rituals of sacrifice, offerings of animals, grains, plants, or wine were the means by which ancients enacted their relationship with the divine. A sacrifice was an offering of something of value in exchange for divine favor, for protection, prosperity, salvation. Our modern English word sacrifice comes from the Latin meaning to make sacred. Today we broadly use the word sacrifice to mean giving up something for the sake of something else, often with a negative connotation and usually without any reference to the idea of the sacred. As I spent my summer among the early Christians and their pagan counterparts, I began to wonder what we may have lost as a culture by divorcing the concept of sacrifice from the sacred. In the course of my studies, I became especially fascinated by the story of a Christian martyr named Vibia Perpetua. She was a woman and a young mother of an infant son at the time of her death. Raised in a prosperous Roman household in the city of Carthage with all the rites and rituals of the Ro Roman pagan religion, but Perpetua converted to Christianity as a young woman. Early in the fourth century, she was put to death in the Carthage arena. Her crime? Confessing her Christian faith after refusing to participate in the Roman ritual sacrifices required under imperial rule. Perpetua willingly chose to sacrifice her own life for the Christian kingdom of God, rather than submit to coercive participation in the Roman rituals of animal sacrifice. For Perpetua, submitting to those demands would not have been sacrifice at all. To sacrifice to God she did not believe in would have been a betrayal of her Christian faith, alienating her from the divine as she knew it instead of bringing her closer to it, would not have been sacrifice, would have been sacrilege. On the other hand, giving up her own life to remain faithful to her Christian religion was the ultimate sacrifice. In perpetuous times, Christian martyrdom was a gateway to eternal life in the divine kingdom of God. Of course, I'm not sharing Perpetua's story to promote violent martyrdom. I'm sharing it to illuminate the profound spiritual roots of the word and the practice of sacrifice. Sacrifice as a ritual offering meant to bring one into relationship with the divine, to make sacred. Having recovered this, this deeper meaning of sacrifice during my summer of studying, I find I am more critical of how it is often used and perhaps misused these days. Maybe giving up my piece of pie isn't really sacrifice. Maybe I'm just sharing. The other day I was driving along the highway when I caught sight of what looked like a prickly rock on the side of the road. My heart sank when I realized it was not a rock at all, but a porcupine that must have been killed by a car just like mine, cruising by at 70 miles per hour. I thought to myself how sad that we so glibly sacrifice innocent wildlife for the convenience of modern highways and our gas-guzzling cars. And then I thought better of my word choice. Is this really a sacrifice? 
especially in that original sense. What is sacred about this porcupine's death? Wouldn't it be more accurate and honest to call the porcupine's death what it is? Collateral damage? As Indigenous Peoples Day approaches this year, I've been more attuned to the way the word sacrifice is sometimes used by government officials and news outlets to describe the observance. For example, in 2016, the, government, the governor of Vermont described the state's observance of the holiday as a way to honor the sacrifice and contributions of the first peoples of this land. I wonder if there is a danger in non-Indigenous people using the word sacrifice to describe the losses endured by the First Peoples of this land. Can land grabbing, genocide, and forced displacement justly be called sacrifice? When non-Indigenous people use the language of sacrifice in this way, do we risk glossing over the violent taking of lives and lands perpetrated by white European colonists? The reality of the loss of indigenous lives and lands isn't a giving up in the modern sense of sacrifice, but rather a coercive taking. We also lose the connection of sacrifice to the sacred, sacrifice as a ritual offering that brings people and communities into relationship with the sacred. It seems to me we've hollowed out the word sacrifice by stripping it of its sacredness. The loss of the sacred is likely linked to a much broader stripping of the sacred from modern American culture. Without a sense of what is sacred in our world, there is no call to sacrifice. Without a sense of what is sacred, we are free to take, to consume, without consequence, and without a sense of relationship and responsibility to that which is greater than ourselves. I wonder what it would be like if we as Unitarian Universalists made a wholehearted, concerted effort to institute rituals of sacrifice into our faith tradition and our daily lives. What might we name as sacred? What might we offer or give up in order to connect to the sacred? What might a practice of ritual sacrifice for the modern UU community look like, feel like, sound like? How might we transform our relationships, our values, our communities, and our world by putting the sacred back in sacrifice?